through the book is Mary Lou Williams. Mm -hmm. How did you s discover Mary Lou Williams and what has she come to mean for you as an artist? Okay, uh, <laughs> I love that. Um, well, I first discovered her through Yusuf Komanyaka's poems. So he had a reference to her in my father's love letters and that's the first time that I ever heard her name. And then later, I took a workshop with him at Provincetown, and um, <laughs> we were walking to get ice cream. He took the whole class out one night to get ice cream, so we're all walking down the little main road, and it was very quiet, and he just turned to me literally just out of the blue. I mean, we were just not saying anything, and he said, you should write a poem about Mary Lou Williams. And I was like, okay. <laughs> and then I thought, I have to find out more about this woman. I have to find out who she is. And so when I got back to Washington, D.C., I started to buy her CDs. You could get them at the Smithsonian at that time, <laughs> like dating myself, <laughs> so the disc, and you could also check them out from the library, so I just started to listen to her, and I had to decide if I liked her, you know, mm. so it took a long time. I didn't just up and start writing about her. I had to first process the music and start it with that, and I have so many good memories of her, like, uh, playing that music even later when I went to an MFA program, playing it for my younger sister. And like, there's like this really great recording of her live at the cookery. And she's so professional, but it, in the background, you can hear all these dishes clinking and she's got kids there. So maybe there's some kind of music program going on. All of this is in the recording. And <laughs> She's like telling them to be quiet, and she sounds so, I don't know, Auntie Mary Lou-ish. So my sister and I just got such a kick out of that. So it's her persona. It's her playing like a man, which is supposed to be a compliment. So, you mm -hmm. know, like a lot of people say, have said, I can't tell that she's a woman, which, okay, that's got its <laughs> own problems. But... You know, basically they're saying she sounds so good, she sounds like a man. That's supposed to be a good thing. Of course, it's guys who have said that. But, yeah. <laughs> you know, so this kind of invisible force who's giving these concerts, influencing the lives of other male musicians who everyone else knows, um, and who's rolling with the changes of her form you know she's just playing all the way through from the time she's a little girl to the time she dies she's rolling with it she's moving with all the changes that are happening in jazz so all of that mm -hmm. I process over many many years yeah it was interesting that you said you had to decide if you liked her mm -hmm. because not even Yusef can make you write a poem you don't mean mm -hmm. I hoped that I would like her, but I had to come to, now I love her on my own terms. I couldn't just write a poem about Mary Lou Williams. I also think that's why there aren't any really like biographical poems about her, like, mm -hmm. oh, she was walking down the street, oh, she did this. It's more me processing what I feel is her approach to her art, her process, like trying to learn from how she worked. What did you learn from her? I learned that it's okay to be multi-voiced. She was that link from Kathy Fagan. You know, she was part of that, the answer that I needed to get on my own. She doesn't, I feel like in our times, there's all this business about a brand. <laughs> And you need to be recognizable for, the, you know, this needs to look like a Warhol or whatever it is. And I think she completely subverted that, subverts that mm. for me. So I can take on many forms, I think. A follow-up uh, to this idea of um, 
maybe negative perceptions of certain types of poetry, the mm -hmm. sing-songy type. Mm -hmm. um, also makes me think of the way that um, women um, mm -hmm. poets are received, particularly women who write about um, being a woman mm -hmm. um, and women's things. Sure. Um, <laughs> I did an interview with uh, Joy Katz, and she talked about this anxiety of writing about her children mm -hmm. uh, because motherhood is seen as sentimental. Mm -hmm. um, and she said something that really um, stuck in my craw. She said the potential for humiliation is everywhere for mm -hmm. women writers. Um, and you write about uh, being a woman, mm -hmm. having children, mm -hmm. uh, being with women. Can you talk about how you negotiate that? Honestly, I feel there is no negotiation. I feel like I came to poetry with people who always made me feel that my, how I lived and what I thought was valid and important. Maybe there's a little bit of luck there, but also, I mean, I don't wanna be coy. I definitely am aware that in our profession or whatever that people that women's work is like hmm, are you writing about children you know so yeah I'm clear on that but it doesn't I have children <laughs> so I write about them yeah you know have you encountered that in terms of the critical reception of your work in a negative way mm -hmm. uh, not to my face mm -hmm. <laughs> Someone could be saying something somewhere else, you know, when I wouldn't, I don't worry yeah. about that. I did though, honestly, there was a, a person, an older male poet who I respected a lot and I still do, but I can remember after I had my daughter, he did say like, oh, you're not gonna write a bunch of childbirth poems, are you? Or something like that. And I, you know, I was like, huh, what an odd, stupid thing to say, you yeah. know, as if it's a thing, a trigger or a trend or, I don't know, I really honestly don't know where that came from. I was very surprised that he said that, but. How did you respond? I didn't, I was so young, I didn't, mm -hmm. you know, there wasn't much of a conversation about that. I didn't say no. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? But I think I was just taken aback a little bit. Well, it's also odd because it makes it sound um, like birthing a child is just like a little thing that happens. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Um, and if anyone has experienced giving birth to a child, it's not, uh, it's not a small thing. Exactly. It's a big, and, big thing. Yeah. Being someone's daughter and now mother certainly made me who I am. Everything that I love about my book is tied up in that experience, those experiences. So, yeah, can whatever. <laughs> Later on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Can you talk about the presence of your mother in this book? Uh, sure. I think she, has, I don't know how to talk. Let's, mm. She's there in so many forms, like she takes the form of the weather, she takes the form of autumn, she takes the form of music, she takes the form of sewing and sound anxiety. So a lot of the things that I obsess about and maybe some of the things, I guess maybe I've inherited some of those obsessions from her take on a kind of form in the book. So it's like a part homage and part challenge, part letter to her, you know, maybe a little bit of a conversation that I probably couldn't have had as a child in her house, but I could have a little bit later with distance. So important, very, very important presence. It's also like a deep gratitude. 